Hey guys, how's it going? Wolf of Corn here. About a month ago, I put a poll up on my YouTube channel about whether you guys would be interested in seeing a tips and techniques video about how I make my airplane videos. Well, this is that video. So here we are. And for the 13% of you that said, no, I'm not interested in that, I would just say, give it a shot. You might find it interesting. And if not, I'll catch you guys on the next flying video. And um, so what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna break it down into three sections. Number one, what kind of gear I like to use. And number two, production techniques on when I'm actually flying the plane. And number three, post-production and editing and how it all comes together in the end. So first, let's start with the gear. And just so you know, there's a link in the description below that'll take you to all the gear that we're talking about today and some more in case you wanna buy it. So the most important piece of gear you're gonna use is your camera and I use GoPros. This is a GoPro 6. I also have a GoPro 7 and a GoPro 8, which is what's filming me right here. Um, there are plenty of other action cameras on the market. GoPro was kind of the one that created this market, and they've been around the longest, and they have, I would say, one of the best cameras out there. Um, not perfect, but the best out there. Um, and if you're going to do a GoPro, I wouldn't go any lower than a GoPro 6 because that's when they started introducing built-in image stabilization into their software, and it was okay. Um, the seven was greatly improved from the six, and the eight is even better than the seven. So um, we all know airplanes like to vibrate a lot, so you're gonna have some serious problems if you don't have image stabilization in your camera, and that's why I recommend the GoPro seven or eight. So while this isn't a video about how to use a GoPro, I will talk about a couple things that are aviation related. Um, first is frame rate. And uh, there's two main frame rates that people film at. One is 24 frames per second and the other is 30 frames per second. 24 frames per second is what you see when you go to the movies. It's got that certain look to it. Um, to me, it's, it's much preferred. I shoot everything at 24 frames per second. Um, the other one is 30 frames per second, which it makes the videos look smoother, almost kind of like the difference between watching a soap opera <laughs> and a movie. You guys really are cowboys. What's your problem, Kazansky? A soap opera, just, it's got that hyper real look to it, which I personally don't prefer. Um, so I recommend you shoot everything at 24 frames per second, and uh, unless you want to shoot slow motion. And uh, for slow motion, which uh, is something I did on my Victorville flyover video and I've done it other times. Slow motion brings this amazing epicness to all these shots. You can make the most boring thing look really cool if you shoot it in slow motion. And for slow motion, I shoot at 60 frames per second, which when I'm shooting normally at 24 frames per second, that's two and a half times slower than normal speed. And what's cool about that is Anytime when you're editing, if you want to speed that footage up to look normal, you can easily do that. But, but if you want, you always have it um, in slow motion. So you, it, it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility. Another important thing to consider is field of view. GoPro usually gives you three options, super wide, wide, and what they call linear. Um, the default, I believe, with GoPro is wide. And uh, it's important to think about before you get rolling and flying around in your uh, airplane because uh, airplanes are pretty cramped as we know so usually the natural thought is well why wouldn't I want wide I, I'll capture more and it's true and you you can um, but there's a couple things I don't like about wide and that's it it actually distorts the image you can see it it's not a straight it's not a realistic looking image it curves around and if you don't want to have that curve in there you, you need to correct it in post-production um, so that's why I usually shoot in linear mode. So for recording audio, there's a couple ways you can go with it. Uh, the easiest option is just to record straight into your camera with your GoPro. There are cables out there that allow you to feed the audio straight into your GoPro. And that's good and that works. I personally don't do that. I use, um, it's called a Zoom H5. It's a dig digital audio recorder. And uh, there's other types of digital audio recorders this is the one I have. And I'll be honest, I use this for things besides flying videos. I, this thing is awesome. And what it does is uh, you've got two mics up here, you've got two mic inputs here. But for the airplane videos, what's important is this 3.5 millimeter uh, audio input right here, which is uh, how you bring the, the audio 
into the audio recorder. One of the main reasons to use dual system audio, which is what this is, recording with a separate device from your camera, is it gives you more flexibility with the audio and post-production. It's easier to control the inputs, and you, you just have more, more control over it. That's the main reason, and it's a little extra step for syncing and post-production, but for me, it's definitely worth the effort. So, so for actually getting the ATC audio into the camera or the digital audio recorder, you need something like this right here. There's a bunch of them out there. This one is made by Pilot USA, but like I said, there's plenty of them out there. I'll put a link down below for, for some options. Um, so what you do is this guy here, you plug into where one of your headset plugs normally goes, and then uh, that headset plug goes into here. It, sp it splits out here, you see and the other side goes to this uh, three and a half millimeter male input here which is what you use to go into your digital audio recorder if you're using one it goes right there so another piece that I actually use with this uh, adapter cable is this guy and this is an attenuator cable and uh, what it does is actually lower the line level input uh, from the cockpit audio into your uh, recording device because usually uh, there's, there's too much line level coming out of your uh, cockpit. So when you're recording, everything is going to be super loud. So you, you normally have to turn the levels down really, really low in order to get a usable recording. What this attenuator cable does is actually lower the line level by 25 decibels. So I connect it to this guy right here. And then the end of this is what I plug into my digital audio recorder right there. It's going to give you, in the end, a much better sounding audio recording. I sometimes mount a camera to the exterior of my plane, and when I do that, I use a product by a company called InFlight Cam. It's this exterior ball mount right here, and it comes in comes with a couple of pieces. It's really well built. It's like industrial strength feeling. Um, nothing cheap here, and it's like aluminum and stainless steel. Besides the in-flight cam mount that I put on my wing sometimes, in my Vic Victorville Flyover video, I also use this mount here, which is called a Mafer clamp. And uh, we use this a lot in the film and television industry um, to basically mount objects onto other objects. So as you can see, you turn this here, it clamps down, and it's super versatile. You can attach it to millions and millions of things. And um, what I did here is attach it to the footstep of the Grumman Tiger here. I put it right here, super secure, it's not going anywhere. And what I attach to the end of the Mafer clamp, this guy here is called a Noga arm. And what it is, it's this awesome articulating arm that goes in any direction you want. Got the GoPro mounted on the end of the Noga arm, and what you can do is turn this handle, and you've got this articulating arm, and it just gives you tons of flexibility with how you want to mount the camera. And once you get it into the position that you like, you just tighten down the knob here and it's secure so the way I did it uh, on the tiger put this guy here and cinched it down really tight once you get this tight on here it's not going anywhere and uh, then you just loosen the arm and you just have ultimate flexibility with where you want to put your camera so I wanted to get the nice profile shot um, so I mounted it pointing sideways and you simply tighten down the arm and there you go. So here we are inside the Grumman and now I'll show you where I mount my cameras inside the plane. Um, this is obviously uh, going to depend on what kind of plane you're flying, but with the Grumman's, they're all kind of laid out the same. And we've got this little dome light right here and this little plastic piece. And so I just put one of those uh, 3M adhesive GoPro mounts right here in the front of the, in front of the dome light. And I just keep that up there all the time. And it's just ready to be, uh, it's ready to accept the camera mount. 
whenever I get in the plane. So I just simply unscrew. So this is what it looks like from the camera mounted in that position. And uh, from here, I want to show you uh, where I mount the uh, second camera usually on the interior of the plane. I have it on this uh, suction cup mount. Again, don't use the suction cup mount on the exterior of the plane. You're, you're just asking for trouble. On the inside of the plane, it's fine. It does fall off sometimes, usually at altitude when the pressure changes, but it's no big deal. You just easily reattach it. So for this one, I usually just, uh, uh, just stick it right there on the side and uh, usually spend a couple minutes just uh, adjusting the camera to get exactly how I want it to be uh, facing. And uh, usually with this one, the field of view, um, I don't know, I switch. Sometimes I do wide, sometimes I do linear with that one, depending uh, if it's just me or two people flying in the plane. So now I'll show you uh, how you hook up the ATC headset adapter and how I set up my digital audio recorder inside the cockpit. Again, it's a little cramped in here, so sorry about the, the tight space. Um, we'll see how it looks. So again, here's, here's the ends of uh, the headset, and uh, that's normally where they go. And uh, here's our headset adapter here. And again, it comes with this plug here and you put it in that side. And this is actual headset here. So this is the smaller pin and it goes in this one here. So this is the female input of the uh, headset adapter. And this is the extra pin from the headset. And you just put it in there. And now, you still have a, uh, you have this guy. This is the uh, other end of the headset adapter plus the attenuator cable that I told you about earlier. And I'm actually recording audio on this uh, recorder right now, but remember we got our 3.5 millimeter input here on the zoom. So we just plug it in there. And so when you're plugged in there, then you're good to go with uh, recording audio from uh, air traffic control. So you're not going to hear anything coming into the digital audio recorder until you have the plane started and the avionics on. And once you have that, you can adjust your, your dial on the uh, digital audio recorder uh, to get the right levels. And as far as levels go, you want to be kind of averaging peaks around a negative 12 dB. You don't want to go much higher than that because if you do, um, you could end up uh, over peaking the audio and um, it's not going to come out sounding good. Okay, so now that we got the plane started and we got the adapter plugged into our digital audio recorder, all we do is hit record, make sure our levels are good, which they are. We can adjust them here. We can fine tune them here, which is nice about uh, having the digital audio, audio recorder. Whereas if you're going straight into the GoPro, you don't really have any control over that. So anyway, I'm looking here, my audio levels are good where I want them. And I'm recording, so all I do is just uh, kind of stick this over to the side and, and that's it for the audio. And because you have the digital audio recorder, you're going to have to sync them together with your cameras in post-production. The one thing you want to try to remember to do uh, every time you start and stop your cameras is do a uh, camera sync, uh, which is a visual and an audio cue, so that you have something to sync with uh, when you're editing. You want to make sure that both cameras can pick up the visual clap and also that the audio recorder picks up the clap as well. Sometimes because we're going through here, I kind of make a little clicking noise with my mouth the same time I clap, just so every, just so I make sure that uh, the audio picks it up. So we go camera sync, three syncs, there you go. And again, you want to repeat that syncing process every time you stop and restart your cameras. And sometimes you forget to do that, and if that's the case, all you have to do is find a moment um, in the video where there's a recognizable audio and visual cue and sync it together. It's not hard to do, it's just, takes a little more time than if you do the, the, the sync like that. All right, so that's some of the gear that I use and how I use it when I'm flying the plane. Now we'll go back to my house and I'll show you where the magic really comes together, which is in post-production. All right, welcome to the edit suite. I wish it was always so easy to go back and forth uh, from my hangar. Um, what I want to show you today are some tips and techniques to make your post-production process of your airplane videos a little easier, a little smoother, 
they're more productive. Um, so I know everyone's using different operating systems and different editing software. This right here is an iMac and I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro. But even if you're not using this setup, a lot of the stuff that I'm showing you can be applied to what you're doing at home. So let's get started. So one of the most important things you can do at the very beginning of a project is be organized. I promise you, the more organized you are, the easier it's going to be from the start to the end of the project. It's probably going to go a lot quicker too, so let me show you some stuff that I do. So here we are in a project, and I want you to look here at the uh, project window here. What I do is I create folders for all the main assets that I'm going to have in my project. So I've got an audio folder, footage folder, and inside there I've got a GoPro 7 and a GoPro 8. So this is all my footage that I shot that I'm going to be editing with. I have a graphics folder and a sequences folder. Sequences are the timelines here that you're going to be editing with. And in that folder, I have it broken down into two subfolders. One is called edits, and that's for the main project that you're going to be working with. And another is called string outs. And what string outs are is literally just you take all the footage, all your assets that you shot. So I'll take my GoPro 7. And I'll throw it on the timeline here. So the idea is you want to have everything strung out on your timeline so it's right in front of you so you can quickly scrub through and look at it easily. And also don't forget uh, the production audio. If you shot with the digital audio recorder you're gonna have separate audio files so you want to take those bring that in right there. So then now that we have everything here in the string out sequence what we need to do now is sync everything together. So we've got our audio file here, and we have our GoPro 7 and our GoPro 8. So now we just need to sync them together, and then once we have that set up, then we're gonna be good to go moving forward for the rest of the project. All right, so here we are now. We have two camera angles that we need to sync along with the audio. So let me show you really quickly how I do that. Um, here's one of the angles here mounted behind my head. Remember I did the uh, the clap inside the cockpit. What I want to do is find that moment in the video. And it's right here. And right when my hands come together, I want to leave a little marker there, which I've already done. So I've got a marker there. And then I want to do the same thing for my other angle. So I literally scrub forward to where my hands clap together and I leave a marker right there. So all I have to do now is drag those together and now with my markers lined up there, if I check my different angles, there's angle one, angle two, everything looks in sync. So I've got those synced up didn't take long at all so for the audio I do the same thing but remember uh, we're using the waveforms as our visual reference to sync this up so on this one we zoom into the waveform and remember I clap three times and you'll the more you do this you'll notice these these little spikes in these waveforms that's that's a clap so if I play it back it's right there so I've got the clap there I put a marker there on the first clap. And all I have to do is line up that marker with the other markers. There we go here. Get those lined up, there we go. And then we just play it and test it. Okay, and then so uh, once you got the plan, so where the so there we go. There now our digital audio recording audio is synced up with uh, cameras one and two, and now we've got our whole flight, everything here, everything synced up all the way to the end. So obviously, the more clips you have, the more syncing you have to do. But this just goes to show you when you do the clap method inside the plane. Uh, it's really easy to sync it up on the back end. Now, another thing I want to talk about are your sequences. And one thing you need to remember is don't be afraid to make multiple sequences to be organized. It's all about being organized. So in this situation, 
I call this one string outs all. String outs all mean everything I've got, it's all in there. Um, so my next step I would want to do is start pulling selects from that big string out of sequences. But instead of doing it in this sequence, maybe you want to have this sequence whole and untouched so you can always go back and reference it later. So what you can do is duplicate that sequence and then call this one string out selects. So then you open up your sequence called string out selects and then you can just start going through your footage and cutting out all the stuff you don't want to have in your video, all the boring stuff that is going to turn off all your YouTube viewers. Just do that. I'm just randomly pulling stuff at the moment, as you can probably tell. So let's say these are my selects. So now I have selects here. I have, I have a different sequence that's everything in case if for whatever reason I want to go back and reference that or pull some stuff that I remember that wasn't in my selects. But using doing the selects just narrows down the process and just makes editing a whole lot easier. So now that we have our selects pulled right here, it's going to be a lot easier to actually put our final edit together because we've already got We've already trimmed the fat basically, so now we're gonna start, you just start whittling away as you go. So now let's just make our uh, actual edit sequence that we're gonna work with. So just create a new sequence. We'll call this one um, Edit. <laughs> Pretty original there. And it's important to remember we have this one sequence called Edit. But we might want to make multiple versions of the edit. Maybe we want to try out a couple different things, but you don't want to delete the other one. So don't be afraid to make lots of multiple sequences of things. So you always have a lot of different versions that you can go back and reference later on. So we'll just start our edit here. And again, I'm not going to do a whole edit here. I'm just going to put our sequences that we selected. Let's just say this is our edit and we're really happy. Say, so, well, let's just say we want to change the angles here. So now, because we have these two cameras um, stacked on top of each other, um, we can switch between our angles here. Let's say with this one, we want to go to this camera angle. And then we want to switch it there. You guys get the idea. So let's say our edit is exactly where we want it. Everything's good. One last thing you can do to really amp up the quality of your footage is color correction and color correction is definitely an art form there's people that they sp that's all they do is color correct and they get paid really well to do it um, but in our case we just want to play with the footage a little bit just to make it look a little nicer so say this shot right here and premiere on the color correction tab they have a thing called curves and curves allows you to really just play around with the image to really play with the, the shadows and the, the mids and you, you can get really crazy crazy as you can tell but when you're color correcting usually less is more so it's just really subtle stuff so say we just want to do this again it's not much but it just it makes your footage stand stand out from uh, the other stuff and just kind of show you that's a little before, after, before, after. It just gives it more contrast in the image. And again, it's a total, totally personal preference as far as color correction, but it just really helps the final video. So, so once you do that, you can apply all the color correction to your footage, export your video, upload it to YouTube, and you're good to go. All right, so I hope you found this video useful for your next airplane video that you're gonna make. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget in the description, I left a link that will take you to a place where you can see some of the gear that I talked about in the video in case you're looking to buy some of the stuff. Um, so that's it. Thanks again for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I'll see you next time.